for you intellectual types, these are my footnotes. <laughs> Humor is not a trick, it's not jokes. Humor is a presence in the world like grace and shines on everybody. This from Garrison Keillor, who's probably our best known humorist in America. Now, I'm not asking for volunteers. I just kind of want a show of hands. How many of you believe that humor is important to your physical health? Ooh, good audience here tonight. And how many of you think you have a pretty good sense of humor? Not everybody, right? And how many wished your coworkers and family would improve their senses of humor? <laughs> yeah, everybody back again, right. We can't do that much for them, but we're going to try and do something for you. What I'm going to ask for you at the end of this is that you uh, <clears throat> smile for no apparent reason, that you seek a humorous perspective, and that you laugh out loud. The benefit for you that you will be more productive, well, first of all, that you, <clears throat> you will have more fun and be more productive and improve your overall health. That's what we're going to talk about today. Dr. Fry said it, humor is contagious, laughter is infectious, both are good for your health. But then Irma Bombeck said, never go to a doctor whose office plants have died. <laughs> and that well-known dietary consultant, Tommy Smothers, or of the Smothers Brothers said, red meat is not bad for you. Now, blue-green meat, that's bad for you. And uh, Julia Child said, if it's beautifully arranged on the plate, you know someone's fingers have been all over it. <laughs> now, what's all this talk about food? Well, our best known evangelist, uh, Billy Graham, said, I give them something to laugh at, then while their mouths are open, give them something to chew on. So that's what we're going to talk about today. This is my PhD dissertation, signed and sealed page. I'm not going to show you that one. What I want to show you is this one, which you can't even quite read. It's the dedication page. It's the only page the committee can't touch. And translated, it says to this, not translated, but just blowing up a little bit, to Dad, who taught me how to laugh. I don't think Dad ever understood that dedication. He was a sugar beet grain farmer in northern Minnesota. He wasn't what you would call a funny man, but he had a great sense of humor. My bachelor's degree is in education, and I was student teaching about 200 miles from home. And on the last day of school, when I was supposed to be out of the apartment the next day, the transmission went out on my clunker car. I had just enough money to pay for gas to get home, and life was at its blackest moment. And I called Dad with this tale of woe, and he listened patiently to that, and when I finished, he said, well, how is your health? I was so mad. He didn't understand the gravity of the situation. Oh, yes, he did. And it's haunted me all these years since because in the great scheme of things, it wasn't a big deal at all. How is your health? Yes, indeed. Well, anyway, I think the next best thing to solving a problem is finding some humor in it, such as this one. If the number two pencil is the most popular, why is it still number two? That's important stuff. Thomas Edison had the most patents in American history, 1,093 patents, and this is what he said. Never worked a day in my life. It was all fun. Well, first of all, I don't think so, Tom. But secondly, what's wrong with that statement? Why is it we think work should not be fun? Oh, it started really early in nice little books like the Walt Disney Golden Books version of The Three Little Pigs. You remember this story? First pig was looking for straw and the second pig for sticks. But the moral of the story is this one. I build my house of stones. I build my house of bricks. There is no time to sing and dance for work and play don't mix. Work and play don't mix. We, could all, we all grew up with these scenarios. You could fill in the blank. Grow up, get serious. Growing up means getting serious. Wipe that stupid Smile off your face. Smiling is stupid. If you don't think this is mainstream, Attila wiped that stupid smile off your face and help me find where my boomerang landed. <laughs> That's the important stuff, yes. So, in this, um, <clears throat> you have some little green sheets that I handed out. Here's our chartreuse that look like this, and there's some blanks to fill in, so you've got to do something. And the first is work and play 
do mix. Fill in do on your little green sheet. You say, why are you having us fill out the sheets, Gene? And the reason is adult learning. Adults, as you probably know, do not learn from experience. It's not a joke. Adults learn from the processing of experience. Doing the thing doesn't teach you anything. It's when you stop and think about it that you learn something. So while this is not the ultimate of processing, I have a better chance that you get a take home from this if I have you fill in the blanks, which is why I'm having you fill in the blanks. And the answer in the first blank is work and play, do mix. So um, let me grab these. So uh, uh, Jack Foster was the executive director of an advertising firm, and he could tell which team was going to have the best ideas. It was the one having the most fun. Now, were they having fun because they were getting ideas? Or were they getting ideas because they were having fun? The latter, no question about it. The, oh, I went, I'm going the wrong way here. Boom. Oh, I forgot to put that one in. Oh, you were, there was the filled in blank. See how cute that is? Boom, goes right in there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway. So there's a cause-effect relationship. The fun comes first, the better work second. Having fun unleashes creativity. That's why the fun is so important in the workplace. So um, here's a quote from... Um, uh, Nancy Gibbs, some things never change. Mama whispered to me that day. There will always be grief and laughter, fear and courage. It's up to us to decide on which of these things we will focus. Focus, little kid is riding a bike. Don't hit the tree, don't hit the tree. Guess what, hits the tree. Why? That's where he's focused. So the next blank is the universal blank. If you're looking for stressful things, that's what you're going to find. If you're looking for happy things, that's what you're going to find. If you want to find sad things, that's what you find. I look for funny things, that's what I find. It's your blank. You decide what you want to look for, that's what you'll find. You might want to leave that blank till tomorrow when you've slept on it a little bit. Because that's where it's going to go. That's what you will find. Okay, kids, a man's out at the mall. Old man, sitting on the bench. Kid walks by, he's got spiked hair. Red, green, yellow, blue. Man just looks at him. Guy says, kid says, what's the matter, pops? Never done anything wild in your life? Got drunk once. Had sex with a parrot. I was wondering if you might be my son. <laughs> might have happened, I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, uh, oops, look for, uh, so there, there's the universal blank and I did that. Okay, everything is changing. People are taking the comedians seriously and the politicians as a joke. From Will Rogers. Will Rogers died in 1935, 80 years ago. So things are maybe not better now, but they don't seem to be much worse either. It just doesn't change that much. So here's the change in communications. Uh, back then, tap, tap, a tap on the, on the log, and then the evolution was to go to the telegraph, and then to the phone, and now we're back to tap, tap, a tap. <laughs> what price communication? Yes. Anyway, so uh, the key to the smile is the key that fits the lock of everybody's heart. I don't have good data on this. I'm told that we only smile about a third as much as we think we do. We think, you know, I smile all the time. They say, never saw her smile, never once. So that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna smile, because a smile is a light on your face to let people know you are home. So what I want you to do, we gotta raise the apples. We're in the apple state, these are the apples, okay? So you gotta do that, and you gotta look at the people next to you and around you, okay? So do that, you don't have to do teeth, but you can do teeth, okay? Give a smile, I wanna see smiles down here. Oh, this is good, this is good, front row is good. A guy back there in the turquoise shirt, he's not smiling, what's with you? Smile, that's better. <laughs> he thought nobody would see him, it's not that dark in here, I can see, smile at me. That's good, yes, 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 isn't that good? Right? So that's what you have just done is called the Duchenne smile. It was named after French neurologist D.B. Duchenne, who in 1862 identified this as an external signal of joy. hoop de doo you say. But, however, we now shift from connection, which this was doing, to health. 
Scientific America, 1994, two independent studies, one, University of Wisconsin-Madison, the second, the University of California, San Francisco, confirmed that the voluntary production of the Duchenne smile, which you just did, evokes in the brain a type of electrical activity that is a feeling of joy. In brief, it gives you a little boost. So when you're smiling, you get a neural response to the brain, the signal sent to the brain translates to happiness and well-being and gives your immunity system a boost. But here's the real trick. It doesn't matter if you're faking it. You still get the boost. So the next little thing here is smiling. Oops, one too far. Smiling. Oops, one too far. Jeepers, what's going on? Smiling. Okay, here we go. Smiling boosts your immunity even if you're faking it. That's why I'm asking you to smile for no apparent reason. It's selfish. It's good for you. So smile more. It's good for you. Right? Smile more. All right, that's the Duchenne smiling. All right, um, Albright said, a positive attitude may not solve all your problems, but it will annoy enough people to make it worth the effort. <laughs> Important stuff here, yes. Now, this is graffiti I approve of. Laughter translates in any language. Smiling is good, laughter takes it to an even higher plane. Here Snoopy says, that kid in the car next to me is crying. He needs something to cheer him up. There, that did it. So a little, little bit of something. Laughter and tears are both responses to frustration and exhaustion. I myself prefer to laugh since there is less cleaning up to do afterward. Right. So we're gonna, that's what we're going to do now. The benefits of mirthful laughter. Oops, did I go too far? Oh, I'm going backwards. This, this is Cam's device here, and I have my own that doesn't go off automatically like a magic trick, <laughs> even though I have one. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to hit that button. Cam, we've got to work through this little dealy bop. Okay, translates in language. There we are, there we are, there we are. Okay, so these results from California. The principal researchers in the healthful benefits of mirthful laughter are in California and they've got some really, really good research. I'm just going to summarize this uh, quickly. Uh, laughing lowers blood pressure, reduces stress hormones, increases muscle flexion, raises blood levels of T cells, interferon gamma and B cells, that's cancer fighters, and releases endorphins, the body's natural pain relievers. So they asked Dr. Tan, what's your advice to the normal person? And he says, why not incorporate laughter into your daily routine? It doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. And there are lots of convincing reasons to do so. So why not? Okay, so uh, Bob Hope says, I have seen what a laugh can do. It can transform almost unbearable tears into something bearable, even hopeful. So for your overall health, Laughter is as important as proper diet and exercise. Laughter is a physical exercise. It, double, it increases the heart rate, increases the breathing rate. A 20 second laugh is about equivalent to three, uh, three minutes on a rowing machine. Which would you rather do? Exactly. So, laugh for laughter's sake. Now, the diaphragm is the only muscle in the body that's connected to other muscles, and there are five ways that you can exercise it. Laughing is one of them. The other four are hiccuping, coughing, sobbing, or vomiting. Which do you prefer? <laughs> right? So that's it. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to laugh for 20 seconds. I'll lead the laugh, okay? I'm not going to tell a joke or anything. We're just going to laugh, all right? I will tell you, though, that Fred Allen said it's bad to suppress laughter because it goes back down and spreads to the hips. <laughs> right? So let's just laugh, and, and I'll leave the laugh. 20 seconds. Here you go. Take a breath. Ah! <laughs> 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 uh -huh. Yeah, that's how to do it. So laughing is jogging for the intestines. That's what it is right there. So now if you do a belly laugh, which I think should be, uh, you know, you, you burn, a, a genuine belly laugh burns 35 calories. 
If you do 15 belly laughs a day, which I think should be the minimum daily adult requirement, you burn 535 calories. I, I don't know how to say this nicely. You can laugh your ass off. <laughs> and regarding sex and laughter, it's okay to laugh in the bedroom, but don't point. <laughs> All right, so the action I'm going to ask of you is that you laugh, smile more. Whoops, it's going too fast. Here we go again. Uh, that you smile more. Lead with a smile. Smile first. The benefit for you is you connect with people. Secondly, seek a humorous perspective. The benefit for you is you, uh, well, first of all, there's that, well, that's where the creative options are. If you view it as ironic or as funny, but the real benefit is you get through it with grace. And the third is to laugh out loud. Out loud. Smiling does, you know, boost your immunity. Smiling does it. Laughing gets it to a better, pl higher plane. It's great for your health. So here's a closing slide. Smile and light the room. Laugh and light the world. I would like to, before we quit, I got uh, just a minute here left. Uh, I would like to uh, close with a little something that is about lighting the world here with this little match. In summarizing why I came, I use the symbol of this flame. It says, I hope I warmed your heart and made you smile and did my part. Now, since it's time to run along symbolically, the match is gone. Bye, everybody.